Welcome to Cindy's Bookshelf, where I choose special stories from my very own shelf to share with you and your families. The special story I chose to share is titled The Ice Cave, written and illustrated by Michael Salmon. Trevor the caveman and his pet rat Pergy looked out from the entrance to their mountain cave. Down in the swamp, the dinosaurs and other creatures were noisily munching their dinner of trees, ferns and water weeds. Trevor gazed out over the volcanoes to the distant horizon. I wonder what sort of land lies over there, he murmured. There could be valleys full of fruit trees and tasty new vegetables. And no clumsy great dinosaurs to annoy us, Pergy groaned. Whenever Trevor started to talk like this, it usually meant trouble. Yes, said Trevor. I think we need a holiday, Pergy. Somewhere nice and peaceful and sunny. Pergy looked doubtful. Oh, come on, said Trevor. Let's pack. Trevor and Pergy set out very early the next morning. Each had a bag full of important things like fish hooks, flint stones and bread rolls. Unfortunately, they weren't up early enough to avoid the dinosaurs. The Platyosaurus, the Corythiosaurus, and the Polycanthus stopped eating their breakfast to watch the holiday makers pass by. One of them started to giggle, and another made a rude noise. Even the greedy Adaposaurus stopped chewing his tree fern and smirked at them. Ignore them, said Trevor. They are foolish, ignorant creatures with very bad manners. Besides, they're probably jealous because we're going on a holiday and they're not. By the end of the day, they had left the swamp far behind and spent that night in dense jungle. The next day, they climbed the warm slopes of the volcanoes and scrambled down the other side. The further they went, the colder it became. Finally, they reached a river that was completely covered with ice. Trevor broke through the frozen surface with his club. Then he and Pergy settled down to fish. But it was no use. Tinkling icicles soon hung from their fishing line and the hole Trevor had made froze over without a trace. Their hands and noses were blue with cold. Oh, so much for lunch, said Pergy glumly. We may as well keep going. Perhaps we'll find something nice for dinner. But things got worse and worse. What's all this white stuff? said Trevor, kicking at some snow. It was everywhere. Even the mountains in the distance were white. Sparkling icicles hung from the rocks and bushes and tinkled in the breeze, but nothing looked very appetizing. I don't think much of this as a holiday resort, said Trevor. Pergy didn't answer. Flakes of the white stuff were falling out of the sky and sticking to his whiskers as they plodded off through the falling snow. They didn't notice the Megaloceros sheltering in the trees. On and on they went. The snow got thicker and the day grew colder. Some holiday, growled Trevor, and swiped at a rock with his club. The rock got to its feet, shaking off its blanket of snow. Then several other rocks stood up too. It was a herd of woolly mammoths. Their long shaggy coats kept them warm while they slept in the snow. I don't know what they are, said Trevor, but I think we've disturbed their afternoon nap. Quickly run, yelled Pergy, seeing the angry mammoths shuffle clumsily towards them, tossing their long white tusks. Trevor and Pergy struggled through the snow drifts as fast as their short legs could carry them. Finally, the lumbering mammoths gave up the chase and settled down once more to sleep through the blizzard. Snow swelled thickly around the two friends as they plodded on. It was so thick they walked straight past the Celiodonta and thought its horns were icicles. Pergy could see a mountain ahead and as they climbed its steep slopes, they both noticed a cave on the ledge above them. At least we can get away from this cold, feathery stuff, grumbled Trevor as he wiped snow off his nose. His beard was frozen stiff. Trevor and Pergy squeezed past some icicles at the mouth of the cave and staggered inside, away from the blizzard. They flopped down, exhausted on the floor of the cave. Gradually, though, 
Pergie had a strange feeling that they were not alone. What's that? He whispered. Strange creatures stood like statues in the caverns all around them. Trevor reached for his club, his eyes like saucers. But something was odd. They weren't moving. Pergie bravely reached forward and tried to touch the nearest creature. But to his surprise, it was frozen solid in a great block of ice. They're all frozen, whispered Trevor, walking around the cave. Well, if we don't warm this place up soon, said Pergie with a shiver, we'll be frozen too. That night, they built a huge fire with some old logs and dry twigs they found at the back of the cave. Trevor struck a spark with his flint stones and they soon had the logs blazing. Pergy warmed up his paws and started to cheer up a bit despite his empty tummy. But it was an eerie feeling having those animals in the ice looking on. It didn't take long for the fire to heat the cave and Trevor and Pergy settled down to sleep. Neither of them heard the drip, drip, drip of melting ice. Pergy woke up in a pool of cold water. The fire was out and he could hear strange snuffles and sneezes in the gloomy cave. The ice was almost melted and the creatures were waking up from their long sleep. Trevor, Trevor! Pergy shook him awake just in time. The saber-toothed tiger was almost out of its icy prison and looking around for its first breakfast in years. Trevor and Pergy didn't wait around to see what it would be. They dashed out of the cave as the tiger shook itself free and bounded after them with a mighty roar. Trevor and Pergy fled down the mountain as the tiger sprang from the cave. It landed just behind them and swiped at Trevor with his long claws barely missing his foot. Look out! yelled Trevor as he tripped over Pergy. The two of them fell headlong over a ledge and rolled down the mountain in the snow. Arms and legs were waving in all directions. The further they tumbled, the more snow they gathered, till they were stuck in the centre of a huge snowball. The tiger watched in disbelief as the snowball bounced off down the hill, spinning faster and faster, until... Smash! The giant snowball crashed into a tree fern and Trevor shot forward into some grass. Pergy clung to the broken fern. The world still seemed to be spinning much too fast. Oh, I feel giddy, said Pergy, clutching his head. But apart from a few bumps and bruises, they were both safe and sound. The ice cave and its strange creatures were far behind them. Trevor got shakily to his feet and leant on his club. Come on, Pergy, he said with a grin. Holidays at home with the dinosaurs and the other reptiles may not be much fun, but they're a lot safer. That's the end of the story. If you'd like to hear more stories from my bookshelf, please like and subscribe for more videos. You can find more stories from Michael Salmon online, in store or at your local library. You can also order some signed copies from Michael Salmon's collection. Links are in the description.